you know, we had a great opening for you, but Tom screwed it up. Yeah. So uh, maybe next week. We'll insert it somehow. Yeah, let's go with Tom screwed it up. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, welcome to The Drill. Steve Lowry, Tom Hofarth, Eric A. Bear, and John McKelvey, who will be having uh, our our new Youngstown segment, which has been a wild success. Uh, Emphasis on wild. It's raining. I I am. Yes. Uh, We didn't. Eventually. Yeah. We really have to start rehearsals. That's true. It's raining here, and to show you how lame we are. <laughs> this, <laughs> no, no, not we. This little beauty is <laughs> mine. We. About a buck ninety-nine, and whenever uh, it's fine, unless it gets wet, and then it disintegrates. <laughs> so we've been using. It's that. made for the sun. <laughs> exactly, it keeps my. It's for uh, old ladies who need to keep the sun off their forehead. It keeps my pallor right. You get the vapors. Tommy, one of my favorite moments of Family Guy, uh, the TV series, that there's actually two Family Guys. There's the early one, then they were they were canceled, and then they came back with the second one. I love the second one. But of the first one, there's they they go out to uh, Fenway Park to see the Red Sox <laughs> play. And this is before the Red Sox started winning a lot of championships. And so everyone's hyped up, and this is going to be great, and it's a new season, and the guy throws one pitch. The guy, a guy on the other team hits a home run, and the announcer says, and the season's over. And that's how I feel about the Dodgers. I mean, it has just been misery since opening pitch. And yesterday was announced that Corey Seager uh, is going to have Tommy John surgery, and he's out. Um, the thing of it is, Tommy, I thought the season was over before <laughs> Corey Seager. This just has not been a good It hasn't look. really started, I don't think, until Justin Turner gets in the lineup. I, I, I don't think it's... I don't think it's going to make any difference. Well, it, all it, it, all they have to do is win their division and then have a decent enough record if they're going to win the wild card. But it's probably going to take winning a division, you know, with a 85 and whatever record. Um, See, that's my thing. I think I think the Diamondbacks are an actually good team. Well, yeah, and head-to-head, yeah. the Diamondbacks are just crushing the Dodgers every night. So, And the thing of it is, the Dodgers, sometimes the team is losing and you're saying, oh, but they're hitting, oh, but they're doing this, oh, yeah. but they're doing that. They're no. a little tough luck. They're not pitching. Kershaw is one and four, and it isn't like oh he's pitched really well, but had some tough luck. The bullpen is atrocious, yeah. and now you got this whole Bellinger scapegoat not hustling. It's like you're just kind of looking for reasons right now to sort of mail it in. Even Dave Roberts isn't himself. He's always yeah. Mr. Nice Guy, can smooth everything over, yeah. and no, I mean, I, to be honest on that thing, I'm on Bellinger's side. You're yeah, I, I think most you're people down have four. been. Why are you going to yeah. third base? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't think this I, – I think the only way they get in the playoffs is as a wild card. And They're not going to have enough wins. Right. Right. That's what I think. Yeah. So, uh, based on last year, uh, and yeah, I don't know how much historically, but I saw this stat yesterday and it's rung true to me. Uh, based on last year, no teams entering the month of May, today being the 1st of May, right. with a sub-500 record made the playoffs. That right now includes – uh, the Dodgers, the Nationals, and uh, the Twins, which we're expected to do a little bit more this year. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people are ra- waiting for them to flip the switch <laughs> like they did last year. But what you have to understand is last year was historic. It had never no, been yeah. done. You can't this expect can't that just, to happen. Yeah, it's not going to no. happen and again. And you've got to count on your division being weak. Yes. And and th- you've got to count on pounding your division opponents right. to rack up all those wins. And, and to, s- to this point, they've done none of that. Yeah, I mean, only if they could somehow find a way to play the Padres every single game. The Even Giants, then, yeah. you know, it, there's no guarantee, especially when they take three games and move them to Mexico. Then it's a crapshoot. that right. You're kind of giving those games up to whatever. Um, the real tragedy is here. I'm thinking if we're still doing this show in the middle of July, <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are we going to be talking about? Yeah. Uh, Otani better be doing. <laughs> Please, better be, better be back from uh, his, his bad ankle. Tell me, why don't we do some drill? Ready for the drill? Can we do a little drill? Eric, can you can you count me down, brother? You got some noise? Yep. You got it. Let's do it. I have it set up for uh, later stuff, so no okay. drill music right now. No drill music. All right. Here we go. All right. In three, two, one. Speaking of July, maybe what we'll be talking about is LAFC, our new uh, professional. A lot of soccer this team. summer. Yeah. A lot of soccer. Unfortunately, <laughs> 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 so they open the stadium. It's a beautiful stadium. Will Ferrell shows up. He lets go a giant crazy bird falcon and everyone's having a good time <laughs> i i no. do you know where we're going with here okay <laughs> anyways people happen to notice that on goal kicks is when the goalie takes the ball and the kicks opposing it. goalie yeah the opposing goalie like like a kickoff in football 
the fans would do this, but they actually say something. And the, something they say is a very offensive, homophobic term that actually is very common when you, if you watch um, Mexican professional soccer or Mex Mexican national um, uh, So why can't soccer. we say the word, or is it that offensive? Should we? we I, I, it's the Internet, guys. You can say whatever you want. The word is puto, P-U-T-O, and it is an offensive. It means uh, a gay prostitute, but not in a good way. So there you go. All right. Did and you know that, Eric? <laughs> <laughs> they made it. <laughs> I didn't even know you were going this way. Really? So don't, don't say we made you do anything. Wait, any I thought no, you no. just said to do it. I thought Eric was uh, the, the translator and how this all worked. <laughs> I'm Asian. Oh. Well, anyways, anyways so. that's what they said. And I I got the, Anyways, that's what they I said. I wanted to know what it was because if it's so offensive, why can't you tell us so we don't say it by accident? Okay, yeah, don't say <laughs> right, that right. word. My first thought was the Dodger second baseman, Nick? <laughs> no, it's a different one. Yeah, that's a, you, you can't say it. And here's the thing. When people talk about... Um, it's kind of hip now to say, yeah, I watch a lot of uh, Premier League soccer. <laughs> I watch a lot of La Liga. Um the thing about soccer is, though, yeah, it's cool to it make you sound cosmopolitan. It's cool that it sounds very, uh, we are the world and diverse and all that. By the way, I'm sorry I didn't want to interrupt your drill. This is all your drill. No, no, I, no. I've been interrupting you ever since. No, no, no. My apologies. Perfectly fine because right, you just short-circuited <laughs> the career I didn't even have. The point is, there is, there is no, I, I don't think there is no approximation in American sports for how other countries feel about soccer. And that is good, and it is very bad. If any, if you have, if you ever want to like go on YouTube and just go Premier League football chants, you will hear some of the funniest, most amazing, choreographed, synchronized, filthy chants you're ever going to hear in your life. You know, I mean, we we make a big deal here if a guy shoots an air ball and everyone goes air ball, air, you know. Or I heard the other day, yesterday, Celtic fans were were cheering, not a rookie. I mean, that's that's yeah, yeah, so right, kid right. stuff the to these yeah. people. Yeah. It's kind of like when you take in soccer, you got to take it all in, and this is the ugly side of soccer. Do you have a story about that, Portugal or something? I do. My 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 uh, my family is in uh, Portugal, and they went to a soccer mm. game where people were stabbed, people were shot, people got rocks thrown at them. They were basically in a cage and not allowed to leave that particular cage in the stadium, and. N no one said, well, this is unusual that people are getting shot and stabbed and thrown rocks at. I believe in Portugal that's just called a lovely afternoon out. <laughs> it's called Tuesday. <laughs> and that's Portuguese soccer. That's not even La Liga. That's not even Serie A or what. It's a crazy. Cr I, I, the only sport I could think that has that kind of passion would be maybe college football. But the worst they do there is they poison trees, you know? I mean, that's... Yeah, they hide the mascot. Um, didn't somebody get beaten to death in the in between the Dodgers and Giants fans? Yeah, but, but no, long no, no. Ago. The difference being... Long ago. Long ago. <laughs> it was long ago. That, like but that, five years ago. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that happens pretty much every time at a soccer match. Yeah, that or, was... or it stopped because they're in these, like, cages. That's happened so often, you know? I, it is probably a lot like a Raider football game. I remember when I used to cover the Raiders. Oh, yeah, you never wanted to cover the Raiders. You, in that LA. was literally like they'd have, you know, uh, passing yards, rushing yards, uh, injuries, and then criminal offenses. Fans, yeah. arrest, arrest. Oh, yeah, it was it was awful. So, I don't know. I, I, uh, I, it sounds like an Eagles game to me. I don't know. <laughs> no, it, it, was, it was very Raider-esque, and one of the reasons why people in L.A. did not – miss the NFL for 20 years. It was like, oh, don't bring the Raiders back. Please right. don't bring the Raiders back. It, you know, Vegas will embrace them. Well, you know what, though? It's funny. In a previous show, when I said the Rams, if they brought in Colin Kaepernick, could become, could kind of take the Raiders' the mantle of being all these. The rebellious. And your friend Susan ripped me and said, the Rams will never be the Raiders. Like, <laughs> Sorry, Susan. <laughs> All right, that's number one. Can you count me down for number two? How long you need? A eh, minute. minute. Okay. <laughs> Cut him short if he feels he's going yeah. astray this If I time. start using any uh, derogatory so, terms in so other languages, cut When me we go off. to a soccer game, first okay. of all, when we go next soccer game we go to, what are we not allowed to say? Can they give us a sheet of things not to do? <laughs> the thing I said before, I just feel like you guys lulled me into Do they that. do this I in really Galaxy games? No. No, this they is do not. not a galaxy? They do not do this. The Galaxy, galaxy is games. such a fun you're right. It's it's a fun experience, and and the the cheering is synchronized, so why would but they, it's kind of why would they do this at the first LAFC game? Um, 
Well, I was talking with uh, my one buddy who's a big soccer fan, and really we were watching the game, and I said somewhere along the lines, uh, because it was the crowd was, eh, watching it like even like halfway through the, the second half where it was still 0-0, zero, zero, the crowd was very kind of like mundane and right. quiet at that point, and we were kind of laughing about it. And I said, hey, man, this is just a bunch of rich white people trying to take advantage of Mexican culture. Mm. And that's basically what it is. And uh, Chivas was uh, the more Mexican um, targeted team yeah. right. in Los right. Angeles. And uh, LAFC has kind of tried to go after that target market as well. Yeah, I could see that. You know, it's like one time I went and saw this old punk band called Stiff Little Fingers. And I saw him at the Mayan. And they come out and play. They'd been they'd regroup because it was hip then. The Sex Pistols got back together and all that. And all of a sudden, the guy just stopped the concert in the middle. And he goes, "Look, man, I know you all seen the documentaries. Stop spitting on us. <laughs> I don't. Li- I didn't like it then. I don't like getting your spit in my mouth now. Just stop it." And and John's right. People try to recreate that. Like, oh, I'm going to be a crazy Mexican soccer fan, right? Yeah, exactly. So. But did somebody spur this on? I mean, did. Was there a group of people that started doing this well, and it caught on? Well, no. It just it became really well known with the Mexican national team. Like I mean, at the LAFC game, how did this start? Oh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, why do you keep looking at me? No, probably. because I'm just looking for an answer. It's probably somewhat something in within the supporter section. Yes. Okay. So it probably became uh, either they just did it because they watch a lot of Mexican uh, league soccer or – uh, I don't know. But you yeah, think they knew what they were doing? Actually, yeah. they just, okay. you know, yeah. thinking about this, this is going to be a little a touchy situation for LAFC. It's one thing if you're Real Madrid or Barcelona and people are acting the jerk or either Lakers and you just say, hey, don't do that, you're, you're out of here, because people want to be there. This is a brand new franchise, and they, they sent out something, hey, let's all cheer yeah. together or something like that. Yeah. I don't know if they want to come down too hard right now on people who are showing some enthusiasm or whatever. Well, they've got four straight home games to sort of work this right. out. That stadium looks sweet. Yeah. I kind of like it. Yeah. Hey, let's let, forget the Sorry. second drill item. It's awful. <laughs> We've done two drill items we're already, on this. We're already 14 minutes okay. in, and, and I really feel like uh, – Is it ins- time for the hockey minutes? Get it out of here. Insulting more people. Is it? Do you want to do the hockey minute or do you want to do the best? the hockey minute. I love let's the hockey the ho- minute. Da 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 Eric, can we start the hockey minute? Oh, it's hockey minute now. Do you have the hockey stein? Do you need the hockey stein? What's the hockey stein? Well, your your cup. What you drank from last time. Oh, yeah. All right. (laughs) Still there. Nothing in it this time. Your cup is full empty, not half empty. All right, hockey minute. Yes. Vegas. I'll never say anything bad about the Vegas Golden Knights again. They're just killing it. Yep. Uh, Last night, beat the Sharks. Couture gets robbed by Fleury, who's been incredible. Right. Did you watch that game last night? I did watch that game. Oh, my God. It was like uh, Vegas was down one nothing, and then when they scored that one goal, it was like the yeah, floodgates three goals opened in three a goals in a minute. Overtime, William Carlson, bar down, just mm-hmm. snipes Martin Jones. Oh. Ridiculous shot. Gross. And my favorite part of the playoffs so far is probably Dustin Bufflin against Nashville. Grabbing Yossi and uh, Watson by the ear like he's their dad. <laughs> <laughs> Just two guys <laughs> by the helmet, throws them around like nothing. That's been a great series. So far, too. what you've seen, who, who would be your uh, favorite now? I still like Pittsburgh in the East, yeah. but the West has been uh, just so entertaining. Yeah. Those teams, they haven't won a cup recently or at all. Correct me if I'm wrong. But, well, the, uh, sa- the, the Sharks are basically like the Capitals, right? They're always favored and they painful. never do anything. Yeah. 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 But it's just so competitive in the West right now. Yeah. Both series are so evenly matched. Did you see the Pens get screwed on that uh, that? Uh, the goal they I scored did. and they took that was, back. Yeah. That was a goal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was it, was oh, yeah. it was 100% a goal. Oh, but, yeah. uh, it was still would have only brought us within one goal. Right. Uh, us, I say. As yeah. a but you never know. The Capitals, the, when the well, momentum's yeah. bad. You know they would yeah. fall. That's the whole Everybody gets team. worried there. Yeah. Everybody loves when the Capitals fall apart. Yeah. Or as my girlfriend calls them, the Crapitals. Oh. Boom. Oh. I that, love the tweet that the. Uh, that's still better than what I said. The said. Golden Knights website, or the Golden Knights Twitter account sent out the other day it says, We've only been in the league for one year, but it already feels like 10. Yeah, just exactly. Based on oh, yeah. all the stress they got to go through. If they make the Stanley Cup finals, do you think it's uh, more of an embarrassment for the NHL or a good thing for the NHL? You know what? I was thinking uh, about this. Yeah. In the old days when um, if you were an expansion team, you really only got the dregs yeah. of a team, it would be an embarrassment. But nowadays, isn't this what you would call the process? Isn't this basically what Philadelphia does? You just get rid of everybody and then just take on all new talent? I think it's just a fluke. 
I, I don't think it's embarrassment, but I don't think it's it's the norm. I think it's such a fluke thing that happens. You yeah. can't expect this to you happen know, in other sports. You know, one of the flukes sports. is is that a player like Fleury was available. Yeah, that, well, that that's, he, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Starting, that's the starting. Yeah, yeah when you normally have, yeah. you would not get that yeah. guy. Well, that, well, Pittsburgh had such an embarrassment of riches at goal yeah. right. and, or goalkeeper last year. But again, year that proves the, the depth of the talent of the league. I think yeah. so. It's, an, it's a good thing for the league, but I don't think it's something that any other – if they do expand maybe to Seattle or something – that team can't expect to have the sort of ex- the the ex- Golden repeat. Knights. Uh, the biggest benefit they're going to have is to the city of Las Vegas because we've talked about it. Raiders are going there, and I got to imagine the NBA and Major League Baseball. WNBA are, uh, already has a yeah, team, right? They, right. Uh, they are going to be killing. To every get into casino this. in their gift shop has Golden Knight gear. It's Can just you imagine? Insane. Yeah, it's insane that see how far they've gotten behind this thing. Uh, well, if you watch the uh, This is the XFL 30 for 30, uh, yeah. the one kid in there was talking about yeah, how yeah. Vegas had never had a pro team. It and killed them, yeah. There's a huge um, Mormon community, and they don't you know, they don't take part in all the Sin City's part of Vegas, but they have nothing to do. Right. So it's like when they got a team that you know they have really had something to grab onto, and Vegas seems to have really, really embraced the NHL, which I really yeah. Have the to kid love. in that documentary just loved the Vegas team. Remember, yeah. he was go Schmidt. The, the kid All in right. the back. Just yeah. to put a bow on the hockey. Oh, minute. sorry. Oh, bow on the hockey minute. Uh, oh. Penguins against Flurry in the finals. I think. Oh, 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 man. oh, that would be, oh, oh I like that. No. Oh, don't yeah. ju- don't you put that. Yeah, evil it might hurt a Penguin fan's mm. heart. No way. Uh, that hurts my heart even to think right about. Now, oh. Right now, it sounds like we're making one of those uh, videos on YouTube it's that a, you, the woman talks and she does that uh, thing with their hair and you get relaxed. And, mm. Oh, anyway, you've you've I gone too deep into YouTube <laughs> yeah. already. Exactly, yeah. You've been on Facebook watching an MLB game. Let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very lonely. It's time for the business. It's time for the business. It's business it's time. time. All right. Tommy, talk to me. This week, the Dodgers foray into Facebook Watch is a Thursday afternoon game in Arizona. I did not think Facebook would take a Dodger game, but at this point, you might as well because it's it's not you're not going to save up these games for the rest of the year. So oh, they wouldn't take one of the three biggest franchises in the sport? No, that doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> well, what you do is you take it as an exclusive broadcast on an afternoon game. It's mostly, you know, Facebook's plan is to do an afternoon game so people can watch it at work. Okay. And it's exclusive so that Sportsnet LA can't show it, MLB TV can't show it. Okay. So they're doing this game on, on Thursday. Um, it's an MLB production. But we talked earlier about how Facebook had issues with uh, buffering when they did this before, and Mets and Phillies fans were going nuts over this a couple weeks ago. Right. Last week, they had a problem. So on the side of the screen, they have a little chat process, and somehow uh, an, 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 an adult website infiltrated it and began to solicit uh, infiltrated. viewers. Infiltrated? Yeah. Nice. Well, it, they called it a... Uh, it, it was a mistake. Uh, well, you know? isn't it always? Yeah, it, yeah I, you know. <laughs> sure. So there's a little naked lady there asking you, you know, do you want to... Uh, Honey, I, I was trying to get to the paper. It wasn't side. my fault. I don't, I don't know what's on. Yeah, do yeah. those ads just pop up on your <laughs> screen all the time? Why is that? Who, who would have thought this would show up when I tapped yeah, in the this drill? Is where, yeah, this is where you go, <laughs> cookies? What cookies? I don't have anything. Who so... Knew? They they've supposedly worked this out, but I think it's more of a, it's obviously more of a Facebook issue yeah. than it is an MLB issue. But to me, people were saying, "Oh, they've got to get this cleaned up." You know what? I kind of want to watch the game now just to see if this is going to happen again. <laughs> what worst thing can happen uh, with an MLB telecast? It's oh, not it's not bad marketing to tell you the there's truth. There's a lot worse thing could happen, like a one to nothing ball game. Yeah, that <laughs> that's the worst thing that could happen. It's not like it's showing up like on the screen in the like, no. in the pop up window or right. anything no. like that. It's just people commenting a bunch of sh- a bunch of crap, right? Yeah, is that what it is? Almost swore. Oh. It got spam. I don't know how you got it, how somebody got involved in that thing. It's a virus or so. I don't know. Ba- basically, some somebody got their uh, account hacked and then. The uh, hacker uh, s- went and spammed a bunch of websites to get clicks to their uh, websites, to right. get ad revenue to their websites, yeah. and blah, blah, blah. Right. It's a bunch of, uh, it's a crappy process, really. And as but, we yeah, know, when it comes to technology, the biggest advancements always come at wartime and through porn, right? I mean, that's basically <laughs> why you have VHS <laughs> tapes, right? Am I right? Oh, my God. We don't have VHS tapes anymore. Right. But we used to have VHS tapes, and that was a big deal, because in, in the DVD, olden days, if free, a young man wanted sights. to see that, you yeah. actually had to go to a theater. Yeah. That was dicey. Yeah, a theater. Yeah. Imagine going it's to like a theater to, have, to see that stuff. I know. It's like when you used to have to go to a stadium to watch baseball. It, you felt like you were Poor by Pee-wee yourself Herman. in that thing. 
Uh, yeah, so, remember the remember the old Tomcat Theater on Sunset Boulevard down in Hollywood? Oh. <laughs> was, I had my 14th birthday was there. Was Pee Wee Herman and I would visit Pee that Pee Wee too, Herman. Too, too much information. Too yeah, much. That's true. Tommy, but it, it just goes to show, actually, I think this, and I'm serious about this now, if, if people are doing that, then it shows it's a rather young audience, probably, who's doing this, right? The hacking in. I don't think 80-year-olds are hacking Which in. Which is what you want. Exactly, because as we've talked almost every time, Major League Baseball, just so old-timey. And an example, a few weeks ago, a woman, I, I, I can't remember her name, did play-by-play for a Colorado Rocky Yeah, game. last week. Who yeah. would have thought anything? And I remember I was watching ESPN's Get Out, or Get Up, Get, get Out, up. Get, get Up. Get Up. And Michelle Beadle, who's fantastic, said, now just wait, she's going to get trashed by all these trolls. And I thought, oh, no. Mm-hmm. Uh, Doris Burke, uh, you know. Um, Jessica Mendoza. Jessica Mendoza. Come on, we're way past that. She was right. Yeah. People went crazy. And it's, it's an example that you've got so many NIMBYs in baseball still. And the weird thing is it's not like this woman was taking a job from some great play-by-play. We know there's basically four good play-by-play people. It's a local broadcast in yeah. Colorado. Yeah. You, we wouldn't have even known it unless someone pointed it out. Right. But then she got hammered so much with the response that the Colorado Rockies started directly – answering them back and basically telling people, hey, criticism is fine, but this is just being mean and yeah. and rude, and it's like grow up. What, are they, what do they think is going to happen to them gonna if happen. they hear a woman's voice while a guy's throwing a curveball? Well, the, the Mendoza line has been drawn Thank you. by Jessica, and yeah. the people, ha- people have a hard time listening to a woman do anything sports-related. Right. Until they get used to it. Right. So you just sort of keep plowing along, and you just you, you, you push – Push things ago. Do you have a? No, no, no. no. Don't, <laughs> Were we don't, getting a look? Don't. Um. <laughs> no, basically my cri- uh, my my feelings on it. The, the yes. criticism is horseshit. Uh, yeah. Th- listen to what she's saying. If right. she knows what she's talking about, she knows what she's talking right. about. Right. And that's what the the Doris Burke uh, experiment has proven. Ex- right. Through all of this, and in that real sports interview. It was the same oh, thing. Great, she was yeah. just saying, listen to what I'm saying. Exactly. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I mean, put it on closed caption. You never know if it was a man or a woman's voice, right? I you would just say know it's five seconds behind. <laughs> 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 I would say most people's first um, experience with baseball play-by-play is having their mom, <laughs> okay, run to first. So, like, what's the big deal? Well, that's, that's, yeah. yeah, that's how you get it. It's like NBA players and, and women's coach. The NBA players are so used to having their moms involved in coaching. Uh, yeah, and I guess, what, 90% of our teachers are women? <laughs> like, when they always ask, like, will they listen to a woman? They have to. <laughs> what are you talking about? We always do. But they didn't play the game. Yeah, yeah, like that helps okay. a lot. Yeah, hey, that, yeah that matters. Hey, Johnny, um, last By week. By the way, did we had a clip from Joe Torre talking about this millennial. Yes. Is there a way we can use that, or should we just? Yeah, sure. You guys want to go to that now? Oh, yeah, good. Sure. That was part of our business part. Oh, my God. I, I apologize if the lip sync is off a little bit. A real Please Hollywood let this here. be yeah. that video after all yeah, this Yeah, real yeah. Hollywood. Yeah, here we go. Oh, hello. Um, I don't know if I can answer that one, but I'll you, give it a shot. You manage a team that really was at the height, I think, of baseball popularity. Uh, the Yankees were glamorous, popular. Now we, we keep hearing about all these things baseball is doing to try to make baseball more palatable to what is known as the millennials. Right. We, uh, Brandon Belt just had this 21 bat, <laughs> and everyone went crazy as if he did it on purpose. <laughs> do you think baseball needs to think in that way? What can we do to change it? Do you think this is just cyclical, that people will find the beauty in baseball? Well, I, I'd like to think it's cyclical, but yeah. we can't sit back and, and uh, assume it's going to be that way. Yeah. <clears throat> I think we've got it. Uh, you know, you say the millennials who, you know, uh, they they want to be entertained. Right. And and we need to be more personal with our sport. Yes. We need to let them uh, know players a little bit more intimate yes. than, than maybe in the past when they see you at a distance and they know your number and stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, Tony Petiti, who's our... Uh, uh, deputy commissioner and yeah. is with CBS and, and all the networks right. you know he's certainly work working toward that goal but yeah it's a little different for me being an old codger and, and not wanting to make any changes but yeah. you have to understand that right. uh, you know I know when David Wells is going to be here tonight wanted to listen to rock music you know hard rock when uh, he was pitching I, I realized that if it's going to help him I got to let it go <laughs> Right, so exactly. so you, you sort of have to be understanding of, of what is interesting people right. and, and try to accommodate them without without disrupting our game. Right, yeah. Thank you very much. 
Cool. So nice. You know what that that story tells about David Wells? Um, you know, Joe was from a Frank Sinatra era. So when he said, you know, he likes to listen to heavy metal, I thought maybe he meant the Carpenters or something. Like that. <laughs> so we actually met David Wells a few minutes later. By the way, if you can ever talk with David Wells, do it. About anything. About anything, especially Kurt Schilling. Not a fan. Not a fan. And. Um, and I said, oh, hey, you said you listened to heavy metal, but what was it? It was Slipknot. Slipknot. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. was It was some good stuff. He claims to have given uh, Mariano Rivera Enter Sandman. Enter Sandman, so, yeah. And he, you know, he's taking yeah. credit for that. He just w- went off on a whole different oh, yeah. tangent of That was cool good, things. good stuff. Yep. Hey, we're getting close to the end, but I have to ask, Johnny, we yes. talked last week about the NFL draft and uh, your Cleveland Browns. Oh yeah, and then Johnny oh, sends out. Man. Johnny sends out. Man, man, so man. he and his buddies, as he said he would do, are sitting there. Er- Eric was is it, he was involved. Were yeah. you there too? Oh, I actually sent the video. Okay. Oh, you <laughs> sent the video. I'm sorry. And when he said Baker Mayfield, you could tell his friends wanted to give him so much crap, but they were so stunned. Everyone just laughed like they were. Hi. It was, was like. <laughs> it was really my roommate in the back, who's he's the diehard Browns fan. Yeah. Like I, I've said last week, I'm a Niner fan. Uh, I root for the Browns. They are like my little, uh, like pet project almost. Like I, I just want them to do well so badly. <laughs> and oh my God, the Baker Mayfield. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to feel really about it. Um, it was, and yeah, if you watched our reactions, we'll probably post the video. Uh, You're okay in with here. the cornerback now, right? The cornerback pick, yeah, Denzel You're Ward from that. Ohio State. The okay. kid, if he is half the player that uh, Latimer was coming out of Ohio State, his rookie season, great pick. Okay, he'll, he'll be uh, a great replacement for Joe Hayden. Okay, um, but like I said, he was never Joe Hayden, never the number one corner. Right. He was yeah, yeah. he was top he was half. Good. He was very, very good. good. Yeah, but uh, yeah, he'll be a good replacement. Hopefully. Even better than Joe Hayden, right? What you got? What'd you guys make of the uh, the Rosen comments after he got drafted? You know, oh. I'm so glad you asked. You There's know what? Nine I, better. You know what I thought about that? I thought he was trying too hard. I think uh, Rosen had heard this thing about you don't care enough, you don't care enough. Oh yeah. Oh, they made nine mistakes. That's yeah. such a. It, it was just that's not him. He's a really interesting guy, and I think he was trying to look like he's hurt. When in fact he must have been thrilled. He's oh. going to be in Arizona. What a what a better situation he's for him. He's going to Larry Fitzgerald. He's <laughs> playing inside for a year. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, but he's in a terrific. His family uh, situation. can drive to games. Hey, by the way, how interesting is the NFC West now? Russell Wilson, Jimmy G, Jared Goff, Josh Rosen. This is a really fun division uh, to watch this year. I think. Right? Should be. Oh, who's, yeah. the se- who's the segue between him and and uh, since Carson Palmer's retiring, who's this? Who's the next? Oh, it's, it's Sam Bradford, who basically oh. is this umbrella. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that's so. But of course, everyone forgets Josh Rosen gets hurt a lot too. Well, yeah, that's that's, that's going to no be the given. downfall yeah. of his. Career. I think the uh, the comments afterwards were pretty. Uh, it played right into. Uh, his whole ESPN article where he's saying he's a bundle of contradictions. Yeah. Yeah. He's saying, look, I don't care what my image is, <laughs> but I'm but I'm trying to craft this image yeah. that I don't care. So, yeah. yeah. Well, it was a silly comment, too, to say nine mistakes. Well, a lot of those teams didn't need a quarterback, so they're not <laughs> making a, a mistake. It's not a mistake. It's Getting just a Bradley different Bradley Chubb opinion. is not a mistake. No, no. And Bradley Chubb, speaking of porn. You Anyways. Might, you might as well draft a raccoon. <laughs> there also, you go. Also, the, the Niners ended up taking uh, that that – Offensive tackle that you were uh, downplaying, right? right. Oh, where the, the Chargers should have taken, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm super stoked about that. Well, the, and the and Chargers they let Lamar got Jackson a, go. and then the Chargers got a fantastic um, uh, DB, six yeah. three, like two twenty five. Yeah. A lot of people like him. A lot. A lot of people like the Chargers draft overall. Yeah, said they did great. Chargers, I think, had a pretty good draft. Yeah, and the Rams didn't draft to like one hundred and eighty two no. or something like that. But did you knows? have a quick raccoon update? Okay, so Can you keep we, it quick we or talk, do you want to? Uh, I'll give it real quick. We, right. we talked about the raccoons. I got home. They apparently went on vacation. So I I um I, I stopped up every port of entry, kind of like the present administration anyway. So uh, okay, great. And literally this morning, so excited to come and talk about the raccoon problem has passed, and they're back. They ke- they just came stumbling in, you know, and you could hear the. Suitcases. It's Hermosa. That's what people do. 
<laughs> Very sad. You just stumble in late from a, a bad weekend bender. All right. Hey, 31 minutes. Anybody want to say anything before we wrap up? I had a quick shout-out to yes. a couple of viewers who were uh, friends of mine from high school. Bill Snyder, my friend from uh, Hawthorne High School, the author of The Eight-Fingered Criminal Son. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a hell of a coach at Kansas State. And uh, part of the teacher strike going on there in Arizona yep. now. Bill, Bill's claim to fame, I don't know if I told you this, in a summer league game back in the uh, 70s, held Byron Scott to 77 points. Nice. Morningside High. Uh, Bill's watching. My friend uh, Tony Frank in South Dakota has been watching. Oh, nice. friend Dave Hi, Cusa Tony. in Cathedral City has been Very watching. Very nice. We, we, we span. We, we, we cross area codes. And, Bill, I, I guarded uh, Byron Scott. He's probably in the exact same. I think it was the Paramount High Summer League. And uh, back then, you see Byron now, real clean cut. Back then, he had March Simpson hair. Oh, yeah. It went straight up. It yeah. was uh, kind of a kid and play thing going on. He would look like someone from the Cosby Kids, the uh, Fat Albert gang. <laughs> Boys, anything? Eric? John John? Good. All good. Cavs tonight? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Hmm. Hmm. What do you think? Hmm. I actually think they have no problems. I think the uh, Pacers were the toughest matchup they're yeah. going to face in the yeah. Eastern Conference. Yeah, I have no no confidence in the Toronto Raptors. No. None whatsoever. Give us a but prediction. What's that? Give us a prediction. I Bob. say uh, I say Cavs in six. I say Cavs in six because they'll, they'll close it out at home. The Raptors are just, I don't know, they just don't have any steel. No. They're very Canadian. Right. Yeah. 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 Hey, thanks for thanks. watching. We know you have a choice, and we're <laughs> glad you choose us. And Follow us on FarthersOffTheWall.com, on Steve Lowry 12, Tom Hofarth. Yes. On uh, Snapchat. No, what do no, you want? we don't have a Snapchat. You're on Facebook. Uh, the Twitter machine. Hey, and I'm really sorry about that word. <laughs> I was we suckered need to know what it is. I was need suckered to know. into it. We need to know what not to say. Okay, you good. dick. Pretty much. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. We're, we'll have more. More coming up later. Bye.